Coming to you from the heart of Midland, this is the January 2015 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, MPS Curriculum Specialist for Auxiliary Education and host of the show. We're very excited to learn today about some of the wonderful cultural activities taking place in our elementary schools. We'll start off with Senora Brenes talking about our Fiesta Hispana with a number of the students that had the opportunity to attend the event. And then we'll be with Senora McMahon learning about the Adams Elementary Culture Club. In between, we'll get the latest news and notes from the high school counselors in the counselor's corner. Uh, but before we start, just a reminder, you can catch all of our programming on our Charter Cable Channel 190, UVerse Channel 99, or on our YouTube site. Just go to www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube button. When you go to the YouTube site, if you click on the red subscribe button, you'll get updates whenever we post a new show. Now our first guest today, uh, there's many of them, so I'm going to look down and make sure I get all the names uh, correct. We have elementary Spanish teacher, Senora Brenes, and then several students from Plymouth Elementary is Claire Ebnett, and from Woodcrest we have Mary McLaughlin, and from Chestnut Hill we have Joey Pelletier. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. You bet. Donata. Well, first, uh, why don't we start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, Senora Brenes, how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching since 1998 okay. um, in the elementary Spanish program, so quite a number of years now, yeah. um, at Chestnut Hill and Woodcrest Elementaries. And so just loving it. And then I also, for the last few years, have served as our teacher leader for the elementary world language program. Sure. And you do a great job there, and we appreciate well, thank it. thank you. So what do you enjoy most about uh, teaching elementary Spanish? Oh, teaching elementary Spanish is just so much fun because I get the kids from kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, which is great to see their progress over the six years that I have the students. And then just seeing their enthusiasm and being able to open that door to a new language and the culture that that involves and exploring outside of Midland and what that means to be part of a global world. Sure. It's just so much fun. It's exciting. And the kids get to have a lot of fun. They learn a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, we hope so. Yeah. We hope so. Now, Mary, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're um, all, now, you're all fifth graders, right? Yes. All right. And so, Mary, you're at Plymouth? No, Woodcrest. Ah, so you're at Woodcrest. So uh, are you enjoying school this year? Yes. Now you're one of the, the older kids in the school? Yeah. What kind of things are you involved in uh, at school um, this year? Um. Well, I do bus buddies, which I take the kids to the bus. And then I'm also in orchestra. Oh, okay. What do you play? I play a violin. And how's that going for you? Good. Yeah? You guys getting ready for your uh, next concert? Is it coming along pretty well? Um... Well, we just started to get into the book, so okay. I don't know when our next concert is going to be. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of different activities that you're involved in. Yeah. All right. Now, Joey, tell us uh, about your school. What do you like doing at school? I'm in safety patrol. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. But um, you cross people across the parking lot. Um, and I'm in band. I play the trumpet. Okay. So you, whenever you play, you get to play loud. That's kind of fun about yeah. playing trumpet, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. And are you enjoying the trumpet? Is it going yes. great? All right, good. How's it sound when you practice at home? Good. All right, good. And Claire, how's school going for you this year? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah? What do you like most about school in the fifth grade? Oh, uh, well, I, I got into leadership Plymouth. It's a thing where you get accepted into, like, a committee for the whole entire school. We do helping hands, which is, like, you help little kids like button up their coats, some of their jackets mm -hmm. and stuff. It's really nice. That's and, great. Yeah. It's great. That it's almost like you're being a mentor or a helping hand, like yeah. you said, to the younger kids. Good. Well, it sounds like you're all off to a great start for fifth grade this year. You're kind of the leaders in your buildings, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, and one of the neat things about fifth grade is you get to be involved in the Fiesta Espana, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Senor Brenes, why don't you tell us a little bit more about this Fiesta Espana? Okay, well, the Fiesta Hispana is an event that the elementary world language teachers or the elementary Spanish teachers sponsor um, pretty much on a yearly basis where we contact community members that are from Spanish-speaking countries that might be living in Midland or Bay City or Saginaw, somewhere in the Midland area, and ask them if they'd be willing to come in for an evening and share a little bit about their country um, with students, give the students a chance to speak Spanish um, with someone other than their teachers in there, other fellow students and then the kids get to come and sing songs and play musical instruments, sample Spanish foods, 
do a craft, dance, and then we also have a performance at the end of the evening that some of our students are involved in and some of the community members are involved in. So it's really just a great international evening um, for parents and students and staff and community members. Now for someone who hasn't been to the Fiesta Hispana, I think they might be surprised to find how many uh, folks from uh, Spanish-speaking countries we have in this area. Do you ever have trouble finding people to come be involved in the event? No, we are so fortunate that in the Midland area um, we really have a great support system of Hispanics ranging from pretty much every Spanish-speaking country in the world. Um, we can find people. Now every year we don't have every country represented. I think this year we had 17 um, people wow. willing to come and available to come that evening. There's always schedule conflicts for some people. Sure. Um, and we're representing 10 different countries this year. Um, so we're really fortunate that we do have that wealth of knowledge and experience in the Midland community and that they're supporting of the fifth graders. Absolutely, that's an awesome thing. Uh, so the country rooms, let's, I'm gonna have you guys tell us a little bit about when, when everyone had a chance to go around and take your passports and visit different countries, what was that all about? What, what kind of things were happening in the classrooms? Uh, Mary, you want to take um, that for us? Well, uh, it was kind of like finding all the different types of culture from like, um, for like, uh, it was really cool because the, they decorated it, how like they may have decorated their house or found things. It was really cool. And so they brought some actual items from yes. their home country. Do you remember any of the rooms that you went to? Is there any particular um, one that stood out to you? Well, um, Guatemala. Okay. Uh, my friend from class, um, his mom did it. Um, he ran it. She ran it. Sure. And uh, she really had a lot of different artifacts. That's awesome. So you got to learn more about Guatemala from seeing yes. what she had there in the room. That sounds great. Now, Joey, when you went around and getting your, now you get your passport marked, right? Yeah. So each time you visit a different country, you get a different passport stamp or marking. What are some of the things you remember about that part of the evening? Um, I went to the music room and I played the guitar. Yeah. And it was really fun. Now, if I remember right, was that a flamenco uh, guitar yeah. lesson that was happening there? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Did you get a kick out of that? Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. All right, cool. And Clara, what about you? What's your favorite part of the evening? Um, uh, well, the tour we took, we, we like started out, and then we went to Zumba. Oh, okay. Well, we were kind of forced to because we wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah. And it would be embarrassing. So, of course, uh, one of my friend's dad said, oh, we should do it. Yeah, and so um, we tried a traditional dance, and it was really cool. And But it was really hot in the gym, so it was kind of hard to not sweat while you're doing it. Yeah, well, that's all right. It was a lot, there were a lot of people there doing that, weren't there? Now, there was another big thing going on at that same time, right? In the cafeteria, there was lots of food. So yeah. can somebody tell us about that? Who wants to take that I'll one? I'll do it. All right, Joey and then, and then Claire, or, and then Mary, tell us more about it. Um, I like the tamales. Yeah. It's, um, I, it was kind of spicy, but yeah. I liked it. Cool. Now, Mary, what did you, uh, what do you remember about the food portion? Um, well, it was like this cheese dip that was like spicy, but it wasn't like too spicy. And then the platinums, I they were I think um, dried ones. I dipped them into the cheese dip, and it tasted really good. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot. There's a lot more than just chips and salsa, right? Which is very or tacos yeah. or something, right? So that was uh, kind of that sounds like a great exposure to to, to a true evidence of the of, of different cultures. Tell us about that first part of the evening with the passport and the food from okay. your perspective. So w how we have the evening set up is the students come in with their parents or other guardians and they get a passport that has a whole map of the Spanish speaking world inside and then they visit different stations be it either the stations with the countries um, where our Hispanics are represented or there's also a music station um, that was new this year. We had Angelo Casar doing flamenco guitar, like Joey mentioned, or, or Barbara Jacques was doing other Hispanic instruments and singing songs. Then there's also an art station that so far the kids haven't mentioned, but that they can do crafts. And all of that is happening, and the food, as you mentioned, all of that is happening for the first hour. The food's always my favorite part. The food yeah. is always okay. a favorite. I always get to smell the food, but yeah. never get to try the food. Right. One of these years, I'm going to make it there in time to eat. Sure. Um, but anyways, we do that for the first hour where the kids are rotating and experiencing the countries, experiencing the music and the dance and the Zumba, right? I can't forget Zumba. I never forget Zumba. <laughs> 
And then we come back together for the final about 45 minutes of the evening and gather everyone together in the gym. Um, and then we have the entertainment portion. That's an equal balance of community members performing for the students and then the students performing things that they've learned sure. outside of the school day. So it's a fun night. Now, during the performance and presentation part of the evenings, uh, Claire, what do, what do you remember about that? Well, I remember I participated in the Ola song where I held up like the Italian way to say hello. Okay. And I, there was like cultural dances and stuff and it was really cool. It was very cool. Joey, what was your favorite part of that? I liked the very end when they did a Spanish teacher com conga line. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of the kids ran onto the floor and then we joined a huge conga line. Yeah. That was fun, wasn't yeah. it? And the teachers were good sports and bringing everybody in. That was great. It was a lot of fun. It was very entertaining. Mary, what do you remember about um, that part well, of the Well, when I was in the Woodcrest dance, so yeah. um, it was actually really fun. And uh, I remember um, the first person who was doing it, it was a cultural dance. It was really cool. It was really cool, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So the, I, I enjoyed your performances a lot. <laughs> and then I just was, it was breathtaking to see some of the, um, well, the guitar and the, the traditional dances that were done. It yeah. really was amazing. We had was it a, was it a Guatemalan dance with the? Uh, it was actually an Incan dance. Sorry, an Incan um, dance. Senora Gumpel from Ecuador okay. volunteered to come in and do a dance that was traditional to the Incan people sure. um, of Ecuador and Peru and through the Andean mountain region, okay. which was wonderful. That was a new addition this year. Which it was, was beautiful. Great. And it was neat. I mean, I'm sure you guys remember that. And it, it was, I mean, the whole audience was was just with her the entire yeah, time. It was really neat. And then, of course, we had the flamenco guitar, and then we had another um, pair that live in the community from Puerto Rico who danced the salsa, which is always sure. great to see the authentic dances, the way they're meant to be danced, instead right. of the way we gringos might decide Not to Not the dance Americanized them. version, but yes, the exactly. traditional <laughs> version. Yeah, well, that's great. It's really important for folks to understand that. You know, one of the things I thought was really nice about the, nice about the whole evening is you had you know hundreds of people all at school for a, essentially a school-based event on a Friday night and, and having a great time. Yeah, this year we had about 250 students and their parents, so we figured by the time we were all in the gymnasium, we probably had over 400, almost 500 people in that gym, so it was a great turnout um, for the evening. Well, great. Well, before we let you go, i got to ask you one more question. So why don't you tell me something ab uh, about your school year? So either maybe what's a favorite book that you've read or what's something that you're really looking forward to later in the school year for the fifth grade, so. Um, well, um, my favorite thing I did so far this year was in science class, we dissected a sheep heart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you had a good time doing yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> well, all right, Senor Bernice, are you gonna lead that uh, lesson next year? No, I think I'll stick to Spanish. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, that's great, I'm glad you enjoyed that. And the neat thing, of course, as you get to middle school and high school, you have lots more opportunities for things like that, if you mm -hmm. like. So. That's awesome. Joey, how about you? I'm doing choir this year, oh, and okay. our concert is right before winter vacation. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to the choir concert. Yeah. Great. And Claire, how about you? Oh, well, I'm in like battle, battle of the books, where you uh -huh. like compete, you read books, and then you compete in uh, battles, and I'm looking, way looking forward to that. It's an awesome event, isn't it? Another mm -hmm. great fifth grade event where you, you read, and you have to remember what you read and compare it to other things. Well, good luck. That, uh, if I remember right, it's uh, February and March when a lot of those competitions take place. Is that right? Yeah, probably. Okay. Well, good luck. I'm sure your team will be great. Thank you. So. Well, uh, food, music, dancing, people from all over the world, I can't imagine a better evening. It sounds wonderful. It was a wonderful evening. And, Senor Benes, uh, I just want to thank you very much and all the elementary Spanish teachers for the hard work that you do in class and in setting this event up because it's just awesome. Well, thank you. Muchas we, gracias. De nada. Well, up next, we have our Counselor's Corner with a high school counselor telling us about what we need to know. And uh, then we'll follow that with another great cultural experience from the elementary buildings, the Adams Elementary Culture Club with Senora McMahon. So stick around for more MPS Today right after this. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? 
It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. Welcome to this month's edition of Counselor's Corner. I'm Jill English, counselor at Dow High School, and here is Craig Hawkins, counselor at Midland High School. Starting off the year of 2015, we would like to let you know about some events that will be happening in the month of January. Shortly after we return from our winter break, uh, teachers will begin giving their recommendations for the courses that your students will be taking next year and they will have a conversation with the student and they will be entering the recommendations into the computer. And if at any point you have any questions about what that recommendation might be for your student, please feel free to contact your child's teacher. It will be the English, Math, Science, and Social Studies teachers who will be making a recommendation for next year, as well as World Languages or any classes that have a prerequisite. To tie in with the teacher recommendations, the high school counselors will be visiting the middle schools to talk with the eighth graders there about life at the high school. We'll be talking with them about the classes that they could ch um, choose to take when, when they begin ninth grade. And then we will also go and help them plan out their four-year plan. We call that the EDP, the Educational Development Plan. So we will help them choose the classes that they think would be a good fit for them for all four years of high school. And then we meet with them every year and, and make adjustments as needed. Uh, to tie in with those middle school presentations, there will also be an incoming ninth grade parent night at each of the high schools. So please check the school's websites for both Dow High and Midland High to find out what those dates are. And this meeting is for parents to come and learn about graduation requirements, classes that are offered, activities and clubs that are available. It's a great evening to learn a lot of information about life at the high school. And then shortly, right after February starts, uh, we will be having a incoming senior parent night. Another important time in January, the week of January 19th through the 21st, students will be taking final exams in each one of their classes. Now, final exams are an important part of the semester grade for students. So we really recommend that kids take the time to really prepare and study for those exams. We want them to contact their teachers if they have any questions. Teachers will often give a lot of support during that time to prepare their students for these exams because they're so important. So we just want to make parents aware that that's a very important time and really help their students in the studying efforts. Make sure they have a place and a time when they can study and if they have any questions, please assist them because uh, we want our students to do the very best they can during that time. Another thing that we're going to be doing at the beginning of February, February 10th, and we want to let you know now in January, so maybe you can put it on your calendar, we're going to have a financial aid night that will be at Dow High, and it's going to be for parents in the community. Uh, and in this night, we're going to have probably the first half hour or so, we'll have a financial aid officer from one of our local universities come in and talk about the financial aid process, uh, scholarships, grants, loans. And then towards the latter part of that night, we're also going to have a, a free application for federal student aid time. That's a form that everybody fills out for Pell Grants, for subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Most universities and colleges will want every student to fill this out. So we're going to cover that in the latter part of this night where we'll go into the computer lab and actually allow parents to begin that, where we can help them and advise them and we'll have financial aid people there to assist us. So that's a real important time that if parents have time, please try to make that, put that on your calendar so you can come in. And that way you can get a lot of those financial aid questions answered because that's an important part of your child going to college. And again, that's February 10th. Um, 
So that's it for Counselor's Corner for the month of January. Please join us next month when we go over important topics in the month of February. Thank you. Welcome back to MPS Today. We're here at Adams Elementary to continue our exploration of cultural events going on in the district. And we're here with a Spanish teacher, Kim McMahon. Uh, Kim, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, Scott. Now, Kim, you've got some pretty exciting things going on. And we wanted to talk to you especially about the Culture Club yes. here at Adams Elementary. Uh, but before we get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been teaching in the district and what do you do? Um, I have been teaching in the district for, this is my 18th year. Okay. I've uh, been at Adams the whole time, but I have enjoyed teaching Spanish, elementary Spanish at several other schools, Longview and Woodcrest and Siebert and St. Bridget and some other schools yeah. too, so yeah. Um, but I've been at Adams for 18 years and actually got my degree in elementary education and thought I would teach a grade, but I had a Spanish major. And the year that I started happened to be the year that they started teaching Spanish at elementary. So I kind of fell into this job, heard a lot about Midland Public Schools and what a great district it was. I'm not from here, so I was really excited to work here and yeah. been doing it ever since. And here we are. Yeah. And it, it seems like you really enjoy teaching Spanish and, and working with elementary students. I do. Um, I think elementary is definitely my, uh, my love, my area of expertise. I love working with the all different ages. It's really fun to have the kindergartners and they're so fun. They love learning language and it's neat to see how they're not afraid yeah. and uh, they learn it so quickly. Their brains are just sponges and um, and then it's neat to see the progression of how much they learn up until fifth grade when we do the Hispanic Heritage Fiesta and they're able to converse and have conversations and yeah, I love my job. It's That's great. great. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, you know, because we earlier in the show we took a look at the Fiesta yeah. España. So tell us about uh, but the preparation for that and what, what do you expect from the students for that and, and how did that, how do, tell us all about that. About the Hispanic Heritage Fiesta. Um, you know, and I don't even know how many years we've been doing it, but probably seven or more. Um, and we just thought it would be really neat to have some sort of culminating activity for the kids since they're going through. And I think a lot of times um, they're, they're shy to talk about it at home, what they're learning, or they're typical of kids, oh, I'm not learning anything in, in that class. And the parents really don't get a chance to see what they can do. And so we thought it would be really neat for a couple of reasons to give the fifth graders a chance to, because it's only for fifth grade and their families, uh, the fifth graders a chance to do something special. Um, a chance for them to see the richness of Hispanic heritage that we have right here in Midland because we have people from this year we have right. 10 countries represented out of the wow. 20 um, and it also gives them a chance to practice their conversation skills we practice them here all the time and doing that's part of our district assessment getting them to speak simple conversation and then it's really fun for them to be able to go and have a passport and pretend to travel the countries and talk to people who are from those countries and hear all the different um, the different um, accents and to be able to use what they know and then they also get to do some papel picado which is a craft try Hispanic food this year we had music which was really nice to have it was an addition this year they can do Zumba they love that and then we have a whole um, program dedicated to Hispanic heritage and um, entertainment and my students at Adams always dance cumbia I have friends Edgar Martinez and Yolima Barbosa they're a couple from Colombia and they okay. teach my kids and so Gives them a chance to experience culture through dance and lots of different things. Yeah, that was a great event. And the dance was beautiful. It really seemed uh, very special for the kids. And they do, do love that. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about the Culture Club. So here at Adams, you have the Culture Club as well. Yes. And uh, what's that all about? Um, I developed the Culture Club maybe, I think this is my fourth or fifth year doing it. Um, it actually started when the district stopped having gifted and talented program. Hmm and they were doing a Young Explorers in Midland, some, a shoot off from that for kids. And I had been doing um, a master's degree in education and I was doing things with making global citizens. And the fact that in the United States, sometimes our students are not prepared to be global citizens and don't know enough about other cultures. And knowing that we have such a richness of different cultures in our community through Dow Chemical, Dow Corning, um, I thought it would be a fun 
activity and Dan Masick was my principal then and, and, and we started it that way. It was something that I had been doing as a thesis and thought, I'll try it out. And so it started small and it's grown. Um, there have been years I've had up to 60 kids in Culture wow. Club um, and it's extracurricular. And so what, my point with Culture Club is to um, just expose the kids to lots of other cultures and we do different things, but um, just to help make them more aware of people around them, more open-minded and more understanding of other cultures. Great. So what are some of the specific activities that you're doing? Um, we do things such as, um, I, I get Adam's parents usually, because we have so many who are from other countries, and they'll come in and they do presentations on their culture. Sometimes it includes dance or speaking that language or um, trying on the clothing, trying different foods, and they teach the kids about their culture and just um, the differences between our culture and their culture. Uh, we do things like that. We also have done um, book readings where we read a book and that's particular to a culture and do talks about that and essays about that. Uh, we do field trips. We've gone to, we were lucky last year to get invited to the Chinese, Tri-City Chinese Association allowed us to come to their annual Chinese New Year event, which is usually closed for the public. And I brought students to that and they got to experience wow. Chinese New Year. We always go to the loons game at the end of the year and we get to meet the Hispanic loons and they speak Spanish to them and they ask them questions. We go to restaurants, um, Lazee's Bamboo Garden, Entre Amigos. Uh, I, this year we did Bollywood dancing through India. It just every year kind of changes, but we just do sure. try to experience a lot of different cultures in a lot of different ways. So about how many events would, it, would a student have the opportunity to go through in a school year or a semester? Um, there's at least one a month okay. and often more. Um, and the Bollywood dancing actually started over the summer. So we started practicing in July and we practiced once a week until the Cultural Awareness Committee um, had their cultural program this past month in October 30th and they danced for that so sometimes those some kids get involved in more things than others and I offer a lot of different opportunities we've gone to see movies um, we went and saw the hundred foot journey the million dollar arm we just saw book of life so I would say I would estimate at least two activities a month and sometimes more and just so there's lots of opportunities lots and of some opportunities. students are able to do more than others but it's, it's their form yes. and what grade levels it's are only for involved? fifth grade okay. So it's something that kids look forward to doing in fifth yeah. grade. Um, this year I changed it a little bit. I, I had a, a lot of kids joining every year and sometimes it was getting unmanageable. There were so many kids and some kids seemed to be really more dedicated than others. So this year I decided to, um, you know, with our PYP focus and, you know, being principled and open-minded and learning and making commitments to things, I um, told them this year that they had to write an application. They had to fill out an application, write an essay about why they wanted to be in Culture Club and what they hoped to learn as a global citizen, and they had to get a letter of recommendation. So it was a little more complicated this year, sure. and I have 30 this year. Okay. And it's, um, so it's been, it was really neat to see, you know, what they thought about becoming a global citizen and, and having them think about why they really wanted to be in Culture Club and make a commitment to it. And um, I think it's really made a difference so far. Sure. You know, one of the neat things that we have in our community is uh, people from all over the world. Yes. And, and it's, it's interesting how the Culture Club is able to do so many more rich activities because of all the resources available in the community. Yes. And we're both part of the Cultural Awareness Committee at the Community Foundation, and it sounds like that's been a nice resource. And you've been able to bring things to the committee as well. Yes. Um, it's been wonderful that the committee at the Midland Foundation, the Cultural Awareness Committee, is awesome, and they've allowed my students... They've given us venues to participate in things and sure. perform at River Days and the Cultural Awareness Month, and plus all of the things that they offer in Cultural Awareness Month is opportunities for my kids to get involved. So right. it's a great committee, and yeah, it really goes hand in hand. Well, along with the Cultural Awareness Committee, the Midland uh, Center for the Arts was involved in bringing Sean Wren yes. uh, to the district recently to town and, and performing in a number of our schools. So we have some video that will show from their performance here. But before they performed for all the students here at Adams, they had a chance to sit down with the Culture Club, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, it was incredibly exciting um, and interesting for the kids, especially because the band does not speak English, and so they had an interpreter, and we prepared early. We On Saturday before, last Saturday, we had um, a parent from China come in and teach us about music in China and yeah. traditional instruments and prepare the kids for China's music and prepare them with a few things they could say to Shenren in Mandarin, which was really nice. So they had a little bit of prep, and we talked about it. 
Um, it definitely was a, you know, a source of pride for the culture club that they got to meet with Sean Wren. Sure. Um, I know a lot of the other students were disappointed, uh, yeah. but it you know, gives the culture club something special to look forward to. And I um, thought it was just really neat for 30 minutes. We got to learn some things about Sean Wren that I don't think you would get to learn in a concert and different things about where they're from and their, their backgrounds. Um, and then hear a little bit of their music, and I think the kids got a really nice feel for that. And I know a lot of them are looking forward to the concert on Friday night because sure. they got they felt like they got to know the band. Sure, and well, isn't it amazing how as as different as people are from all over the world, there's some things that are just true about all of us. Yes, and you don't, you don't really get to see that from TV or movies or reading. Um, right. But when you meet somebody and sit down and talk with them for half an hour, like your students mm -hmm. had a chance to do. You're able to make those kind of connections, aren't you? You are. What, what kind of things have you heard from the students? It's only been a few days uh, at this point, but what, what have you heard from them about that? What did they have to say about meeting the band? Well, I have to tell you, um, they were really excited about meeting the band, and I've listened to them even in the hallways tell the other kids who didn't get to meet the band different snippets of information that we knew that they didn't get to know yeah. about the band members. Um, and I shared it with some other kids, and I have to tell you, one of my first graders, we were talking about one of the band members, Futa, who we, was shared with us that he came from a very poor family and was kind of a street performer that got snatched up by the band yeah. and, and had this great opportunity. And we've been learning about you know PYP, and so we have a whole bunch of learner profile words. And a first grader said, I think that Sean Wren is very caring because they took the time to get to know Futa and they let him be in his band and they helped him learn Mandarin, and they're very caring. So I'm just proud oh, of how great. they're seeing even my kids that aren't in culture club, but my kids in culture club also, are you know, just getting the chance to you know see another side of people and like you said, see the things that are the same. Because I think they got a chance to interact with the band and dance with the band, like your son, yeah. who was awesome, and um, it gave them a chance to see that even though they don't speak the same language and they they don't speak any English and we don't speak Mandarin, but they could still interact on a very personal level with the band. And I know. A lot of them have encouraged their families, like I said, to take them to the concert on Friday night so they can see some of the other kinds of music the band does that they didn't share with us here. Sure. Well, that's great. Uh, anything else that you want to tell us about the Culture Club? What do you have coming up next? Um, well, in December, uh, we are going to learn about Christmas in Denmark and England. Okay. Um, I like to you know, teach a little bit about the holidays in other countries. Mm -hmm. We have a family from there. Um, we have... Uh, we are still doing our Bollywood in different places. We've been asked by um, the Cultural Awareness Committee has partnered with The Rock through the Community Center Jefferson and Northeast. And my Bollywood dancers, some of my girls from Culture Club, are going to be presenting Bollywood dance and teaching that at The Rock. Um, so they have that coming up. And uh, we just, I mean, that's what's coming up soon. But um, I'm just... I am really excited about Culture Club. I feel like it's something that started small and it's really grown and it's gained some momentum and a lot of uh, kind of like an honor here at my school. And the kids, I'm very proud of how the kids are excited to become fifth graders so they can be a part of it. And I've had parents say to me things that meant a lot to me about their kids who maybe at some point were embarrassed by their culture because they were different and have now, because of my culture club have shown an interest in their culture, learning their language, and wanting to share it because it's become um, something that's deemed as very positive at Adams Elementary. So that's I'm great. proud of it. I'm proud of my students. It's probably the fa my most favorite thing I do. Yeah, that's definitely something yeah. to be excited about, isn't yeah. it? That's awesome. Well, Kim McMahon, thank you very much for sharing with us today about the yes. culture club and for everything that you do in your Spanish classes uh, and with all your students. We, we appreciate it very much. Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk. Thanks. All right. Great. You bet. Well, that's our show for today. We hope you've enjoyed getting to know about some of the wonderful culture opportunities available for our students here at the Midland Public Schools. And we'll see you next time on NPS Today.